Welcome into the latest episode of Betting the Pitch. I'm your host, the real underscore G Warner on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, and on YouTube. On today's episode, we're going to go through Euro 2024 uh, from top to bottom, from soup to nuts. We're going to go through and try to give as much as we can, or at least I will, because it's a one man band today. Uh, but going through everything I can think of from futures, trying to outline what I expect from each of the, the teams in this competition, what they're all shooting for. And of course, a format that allows four of the top six third place finishers to get through means pretty much everyone is moving on. So try to come up with maybe some outside type of long shots that might not go through. Usually that's based on troubles in the camp, maybe uh, a goalkeeper like Thibaut Courtois sleeping with the captain, Kevin De Bruyne's uh wife or something like that i'm not sure if that's what happened and why Thibaut courtois was left out of the squad i'm not sure if that's happened or anything like that i guess if the lawyers need to get involved um you don't have a lot to take for me but uh it's just something a rumor i heard recently uh but to go through each of the groups uh and try to find some winners here we'll have an ultimate best bet end of show which i will cut into a reel on instagram at the real underscore g warner also a youtube short on youtube uh at the real underscore g warner and um Still have a baseball pod coming out tomorrow night with at A Brooks Bets. Plus, we'll be doing a Copa America futures episode and then going through each of the match days uh, until we get a European and a Copa American, uh, Copa America campeon or champion. And uh, we'll see that all happen through the rest of the summer. And then we'll get into a plenty of off season, get ready for the Bundesliga, La Liga in Spain, Serie A, English Premier League, and Ligue 1 in France. And if anyone has any other requests, feel free to throw them in here. And if you ha have a way to at me while I'm doing this podcast, I can certainly touch on whatever you're looking for, or we'll come back to it on a later episode. So uh, I'm going to start with the groups and kind of give an idea of kind of what I'm expecting. I'll be using lines courtesy of BetOnline and SportsBetting.ag. If you're not a member of either of those sites, go check the links in the podcast description. Once you're posted to Apple Podcasts and on YouTube, also on Spotify, and you get some free money from those casinos. Um, best way to, to to win money, I think, in this sport is getting as many freebies as possible from uh, casinos very hungry for your action. Um, but And also, if you're watching on YouTube or Spotify or Apple Podcasts after this has been recorded, please hit a five-star review in there, add a comment, make it relevant to soccer, or make it relevant to one of the other sports I'm covering with some great friends of mine that are all on the other podcasts, and I will have them act them out, uh, as I've promised that for each uh, moving forward. So I'll start with the group kind of an overview. We'll start in Group A in Ger Germany. Uh, as the tournament is in Deutschland, but the tournament is starting with Germany and Scotland in the first match up, first match day on Friday, June 14th, recording this Monday, June 10th. And we still have a few friendlies uh, taking place, including uh, a lot to talk about with Poland today in their uh, home match with uh, Turkey or Turkey. And uh, so we'll start with with Germany, who are the, the host in this competition, uh, but are not one of the favorites. Ultimately, uh, they are, to me, uh, so far from where we know this Deutschland, die Mannschaft type of, of squad to be just nowhere near where expectations were, I think. Um, and unfortunately, it's been a really, really rough ride. Uh, I've been watching the uh, the futures as they've moved through uh, in this competition. I'll give you an idea of kind of where things started. I initially took this down July 18th, 2023. So that would be almost a year ago. Uh, that was my, my first, I guess, track tracking of these these odds to win. And Germany were the third favorites to win. Uh, it looks like from a recent update, I grabbed one. It looks like five days ago, I can go through and grab one, maybe even live as we do this. If you will bear with me for a moment, that might be the best thing to do to see if there's been any significant movement since uh, this all began. So let's pull that while I'm here. Um, I don't know that it's super helpful for me to read off, read this off like I, I guess normally could or would um but i guess we've seen some movement and uh like england for instance has has climbed a fair amount in their uh odds so that that's i guess that's of interest um okay so thank you ai if it even is ai i don't even know okay um so what i will do here now so this is the 10th of june so that is my new newest update uh let's see i'll go here and here sorry i'm doing some some work on the back end to make sure this all makes sense and i will do it 
I guess I can run through and do odds from a reference point to the odds I took about a week ago and then from a year ago and see how these have moved as well. So I'll do that here as well. I'll go E and E, but I'll do B here. So, so Germany uh, have not moved since the 5th of June when I, when I pulled. They're five and a half to one to, to win this competition. Uh, it looks like they've actually dropped from a 575 plus 575 on July 18th, 2023. So that's about 5% down. So uh, that tells me there's been a little respect coming in, maybe with uh, Tony Kroos coming in, the uh, Real Madrid Champions League winner, important, essential for uh, the German uh, midfield, uh, even though I think he had previously retired from the, the national team. Um, but Germany has a lot to prove. They have a manager in Julian Nagelsmann, who uh, was uh, the next big thing, took over at Bayern München and then uh, kind of got pushed out. I don't know if he was, he was doing something where he's dating someone and, and being really obnoxious or something like that. Or maybe those are reports that came out. Um, regardless, it's been not a really great run. Germany has been an auto fade in pretty much every competition because they didn't have to qualify for Euros as the host. Uh, but pretty much any team they came up against, I don't even know if they beat anybody uh, of note, um, pretty much wanted to bet against them. And then they kind of had a good turn in the last international window, the international breaks. But um, it's really hard to, to really believe in what we've seen recently because there's so much that has changed in a very long time. Germany are still third favorites to win this competition at home. Um, which probably is is not slighting them at all and certainly does not reflect how poorly they played in while everyone else was, was fighting to qualify. A um, lot of questions about Germany and what they will end up looking like in this competition, but uh, there will be a lot of expectations on forced upon uh, D mine shaft to, uh, to win this competition, to play beautiful football. Um, and that's not really how I expect this competition to go. Uh, basically all the studying I've done and all the watching I've done of, of international windows, it's, it's pretty much a race, the first goal, and then a lot of defending, which is great for me as an underdog and an under player. Uh, but certainly isn't great for beautiful football. It might not be the best, I guess, audition for this game in front of a lot of new eyes. that will be watching during their work hours here in the United States, uh, during the day. Uh, but Scotland is the first matchup with Germany. Um, Scotland were great in qualifying and were not ever expected to be uh, a guarantee to make this competition, but did it very easily. Um, and it's going to be a big question to see how they come through, because you could argue that Euro, even though it's, expo it's expanded to 24 teams from the initial 16 when I started following this competition, I guess. Um, still lauded as one of the more competitive competitions out there, more competitive than the World Cup a lot of times because Europe is so strong and so deep in their soccer uh, makeup, I guess. But the expansion to 2014 has changed that a little bit. Uh, but most of these groups are, are all really good. There might be a, just a, a few stragglers that kind of fought their way to get in and might not have deserved it. And it doesn't really necessarily look that way in this competition. Um, Scotland are going to be underdogs, I think, in, in most or if not all of their matches. And we'll see if they get to the group stage, which, I mean, 20 of, I think it's it's a very small percentage that don't make it. Basically, don't finish last or finish with a really horrible point total and you should be able to move 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 through because really only the bottom i think six club or, or six countries uh eight countries excuse me don't move through um so it's really not that hard but uh hungary uh went to their match at germany at leipzig in uh eastern germany watched hungary get a, a goal off a, a great set piece corner kick type of a play and then beat the germans playing a really defensive way and i expect we see that same similarly for Hungary. Uh, I feel like they're one of those young up and coming sides that have a lot of good, talented players that don't really have a ton of expectations put on them. We'll see about the health of Dominic Schobuschloy from uh, Liverpool, plus uh, my guy Roland Scholoy from uh, Freiburg, and uh, really a lot of great defenders, a lot of great teams in there as well. Uh, and last but not least in Switzerland, uh, in this Group A, also very talented, have been pretty dominant and are very good at getting deep into knockout rounds in these tournaments, despite not having the the footballing pedigree that a lot of these their opponents will. So uh, a, a lot to see in this Group A. Um, I feel like Germany starts with their easiest opponent in Scotland. Uh, but Hungary and Switzerland will be very difficult. The The sad part is it's not a true two out of four advance here, um, which would be really nice because I think there would be a lot of pressure in Germany in that situation, even more than being the host. A move next, or I guess I'll, I'll state the, uh, I guess the other uh, numbers since we're going through the group. My bad, forgot to mention that. So Scotland, 
they were initially, let's see, they were initially 80 to one uh, to win the Euro that climbed to 200 to one. And that is where it's been and where we're at still. Uh, it's not a ton of movement so far, but a 60% increase, um, I guess, as these numbers have expanded, trying to get as much money as possible to balance uh, the potential, uh, I guess, uh, maybe the liability you'd call it at, at bet online potentially because certainly the biggest countries are getting all the bets and they want to cover themselves with as much as possible to try to make this as even as uh as possible though certainly i think that's impossible on a lot of these type of things uh moving next we'll go to hungary which are uh they started 100 to 1 have have climbed to 125 to 1 now down to 120 to 1 as we speak or as i as, as i speak uh but they're ultimately so they're more likely to win it than Scotland's. And then Switzerland should be a lot above that as well. And Switzerland, the Swiss are, where the heck are Switzerland? Uh, they are, they started 40 to one, climbed to 90 to one, or down to 66 to one. So that's pretty significant. So basically we're seeing a lot of numbers that were put that out there initially to gauge interest. And then I guess as we've gotten close to this competition, bet online slash sports betting at AG are spreading out and trying to get as much money on these lower teams as possible by upping the multipliers. But uh, so it looks like pretty much based on odds to win this competition, which is not certainly answer how uh, the group finish would, would suggest, but it does make it look like Germany, big favorites in this group as they should be at home. Uh, but I really only give that a quarter of a goal in every match. And does that really matter? I mean, it doesn't during the national breaks during the regular season. It probably should matter more uh, in this competition that the Germans will come out and support. Uh, but things can can turn pretty quickly. So it'll be Germany, Switzerland, Hungary, and Scotland with the order of finish based on odds to win the tournament. And I'll move now to Group B, where uh, this could be called the group of death with Spain, Croatia, Italy, and Albania. Looks like one of these does not look like the other, unfortunately, for the Albanians. But they did a pretty good job getting in this competition. Spain uh, have left Luis Enrique behind, or at least he left for PSG, and they're kind of international setup has brought their their manager in and Spain look a lot better than I feel like they've been in the past where I feel like they couldn't score goals and look like one of those sides that were a gigantic favorite in a lot of matches. Uh, I'm a little wary of fading Spain like I have in a lot of competitions previously. Uh, I think it might be a lot harder for the for uh, people betting against Spain to get away with that sort of thing moving forward. Um, but I think uh, just one of those things, I don't know if I just enabled comments. I don't know if those will actually show up, but uh, please, if, if you got something, feel free to throw through and I will, I will respond when I see it. Um, but moving next to Croatia, we got a big win over Portugal on the road in a friendly this week or last week um, leading up to, into this competition. Uh, Croatia, pretty much the same squad. Luka Modra is still captaining. There's still uh, Brozovic and Perisic and Kramaric and all the itches that you could even think of. Um, and they're awesome. Saw them in Vienna a couple seasons ago. Um, I don't really see any sort of difference here. Croatia, Slako Dalic, their manager is still in place, which is incredible. But, I mean, the success certainly speaks for itself. Uh, I expect Croatia to be very difficult to beat and to be able to knock out anybody uh, in, in this competition and moving forward until their golden generation seems to retire. But it seems like they're all going to play into their 40s. Uh, Italia in this competition, uh, it's their first after they missed the World Cup after winning the, the previous version of the Euros. Uh, they were, I mean, an underdog to England at Wembley stadium. If I remember correctly in the last Euro 2020 played in 2021 due to the COVID pandemic. Thank God we're past that time. Uh, but the Italians have a lot to prove. Uh, they do feel like, or I feel very confident based on how Atalanta played this year, though certainly it's an international team, but the fact that they got to build up uh, with Skamaka and got a striker who looks like maybe the most potent in this tournament, potentially besides the Canes and I guess the Mbappes, but I would call Mbappe a winger more than a striker, but uh, it, an Italian striker being in the conversation with uh, the rest, I guess Giroud is up there too. Um, is a big, big deal for Italia, who have not been able to score goals a lot for uh, for a lot of time now, it seems. Um, the Albanians, they are going to have a really tough time, I think, getting out. They're probably most likely of anyone to finish bottom of their group. I don't know necessarily what the odds of that will be. Uh, we might get to that later in this, this actual show. Uh, but I actually don't think I have Albania on my list from uh, my initial grab. I guess they weren't on the bet online list way, way back when. 
but I can say it now. So Albania currently 500 to one. Uh, they are tied for the bottom with Georgia, Slovakia and Slovenia as least likely to win this competition. I think that makes a lot of sense in terms of the top of this top heavy group, um, which I mean, all three of these teams, I think, could win it. Italy, Spain or Croatia. Uh, Spain will be the favorites here. They were plus 70 plus 750. So seven and a half to one odds uh on the in 2023 when i pulled this about a year ago five to plus 850 are down to eight to one odds so uh moving about six and a quarter percent in the two directions um and that makes them let's see one two three four five fifth most likely to win this competition uh I'll find italy next they were 13 to one about a year ago move up to 16 to one are still there um and then Croatia were 25 to one, climbed to 45 to one and are down to 40 to one. Uh, I think of my biggest interest so far is probably the, the Croatians at 40 to one, because I feel like they I mean, it's really not about winning this group. It's about the knockouts. And I feel like that's where they're best prepared. But I also feel like they have a very low probability of not getting out of their group, which is really nice for a 40 to one long shot. Uh, I think that anyone would call it that. Um, Spain certainly looks like the class of this group, but I don't think there's a huge difference between Italy and Croatia. Um, so if, to me, there's a lot of value on the Croats at this point. Uh, and I'll move on. I think unless they have anything coming through here. Uh, yeah, I guess I have this. So if you want to say something on StreamYard, then, then go ahead. Uh, I guess we'll see if that ends up happening and working out, but thank you for all of you that are watching live. I certainly appreciate that. Uh, moving next to uh, Group C, we have Slovenia, Denmark, Serbia, and England. So England are installed as favorites to win this competition. Uh, I'm not sure they've won anything since 1966. Uh, by my math, that's 58 years. It's a long time. I've not been alive that entire time that England's been waiting. Uh, but I'm really hoping that this is not the year for them to solve their problems. Of course, the English squad looks great. So you think about their injuries and in defense and their defense in general, plus that idiot managing their team that wants to play conservatively with some of the best players in the world. Uh, you could argue that everyone wants to do this as competition and it's too naive to play to score goals. But England, I think, are going to be a really good team to bet against as a big favorite in this competition because they are trying to win matches by a single goal. Probably won't be a lot of situations where we can get England more than a goal favorite, but might be in a bunch of these games in their in their group and then uh, early rounds of the the, the knockout stage as well. Um, England started at plus 450 to win uh, at joint favorites with France, moved down to three to one odds about a week ago, and then now they're up to plus 365. So they fell as far as 17.81%, have climbed back up 23%. Um, pretty much, to me, uh, it is a team that I feel like um, has a lot of talent, but we'll see what it ends up turning into uh it's gonna be hard to find the next on the list so denmark 28 to 1 uh, a year ago climbed to 55 to 1 and then are now settling about 50 to 1 odds to win this competition um not a great two percent like chance to win or so says the uh says the marketplace uh i really was was hot on denmark heading into the world cup they were very disappointing um but we'll see what ends up happening with them uh i think when I look next to find uh, Serbia, Slovenia is one of those long shots as I already said, but Serbia, they were 66 to one odds uh, about a year ago, climbed 175 to one or now hundred to one. So those are some pretty drastic differences, maybe some money coming in on, on Serbia recently. Uh, but ultimately there's a lot of talent in Serbia that doesn't seem to get put together in any of these competitions. It's hard to trust that of course, uh, last, I think that I'll mention is Slovenia, uh, and they were small enough that they weren't on that initial list. I guess they were, excuse me. So they're 200 to one odds, climbed to 400 to one odds, and now are 500 to one odds. So that tells me not a lot of belief in the Slovenians who, I mean, back when they had Ilicic, who was famous for playing at uh, Atalanta in Italia, uh, maybe that would have been a better chance for them. They have been uh, not really ever getting a lot of respect uh, in in European matches and in international breaks, it's probably, I mean, they're going to go and try to defend as much as they can, and they're going to face some really good teams. So that feels like kind of an Albania style, not maybe not as bad or as drastic because they're not three top tier clubs or, or countries is a better way to say that in that group, but uh, it doesn't look great for Slovenia to get through to the next stage. Moving next to group D, we have Poland, Netherlands, Austria, and France. Uh, I'll start with the uh, favorites, which were actually the previous uh, 
in t- favors to win the entire competition. France at plus four fifty, uh, hundred dollars to win you four fifty. They dropped the four to one odds, and that's where they they remain. So they are second favorites, slightly behind England to win this competition. Uh, next would be the Dutch, the Netherlands. They were sixteen to one odds a year ago, up to eighteen to one, and now climbed to twenty to one odds. And one thing I've noticed from them in their uh, recent play under Ronald Koeman, the former uh, Dutch manager who then left for Barcelona and then came back, um, they have played a lot a lot more defensive football than I would expect. Because the Netherlands were under Louis van Gaal, they were basically uh, trying to out- win every match five to three. Um, it's not a very good plan, I don't think. But uh, I do feel weird about seeing how really conservative they've looked so far when I've watched them. Um, that's something to, to look at because uh, it's a, a drastic change from kind of how they used to be. Um, Austria then come next on this list, those a lot further down. Uh, they all, were 50 to one uh, about a year ago, climbed up to 80 to one and now settled at 66 to one odds to win this competition. And last uh, are Poland who just played and uh, they lost two strikers today in their last uh uh, their last friendly at home against Turkey or Turkey in uh, so this is Monday, June 10th. Uh, they lost Swiderski, who scored a goal and then uh, was celebrating and looks like he had a bad injury, tried to stay on. So I guess it wasn't that bad, tried to play through it, but eventually got subbed out. And then we saw Robin Lewandowski sitting down, uh, probably their most important player, um, though he's a lot of times kind of a, a man up a creek without an oar at, or without a paddle, without a paddle. Um, he sat down and left in the 32nd minute. So Poland might have lost two strikers in their match before this competition. Not great to say the least. Uh, Poland first that I saw were 80 to one odds when this competition climbed to 175 to one odds and are now 200 to one odds. And that is before uh, today's results. So uh, not a great combo there to say the least. So it looks like um, we're, I, I guess the odds maker is expecting France and the Netherlands to be one, two, then a, a fall to Austria and a pretty big gap to Poland. And uh, Poland is a team I'd like to bet against because I feel like they've been overrated based on Lewandowski. Uh, but if he's not playing, maybe there'll be some value on Polska because they will be uh, much less appreciated uh, in the marketplace, I think, to win this competition or do anything in this competition at all. Moving next to Group E, as in Edward, we have Belgium, Slovakia, Romania, and Ukraine. Or Ukraine. Um, this feels like a pretty... Uh, dominant group position for Belgium. So Belgium, they uh, initially were, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh to win this competition, uh, opening at 16 to one, climbed to 20 to one or back down to 16 to one. Uh, doesn't look like Thibaut Courtois, as I mentioned, is in the squad. So that's different. They're going to have to figure out goalkeepers. Uh, Colin Castiles, I saw started a friendly recently. I, de- I don't know that he I, looks like Matt Sells, the Nottingham Forest keeper, formerly of Austria Strasbourg, that he might be uh, the, the starting kill- goalkeeper for the team. I don't know how that's going to look. There's a lot of young talent for Belgium. Uh, but as Kevin De Bruyne has said in the World Cup, they're, they're too old and then too young. And there's a big gap and it went really poorly. Uh, He's still in the squad, still looks awesome. Just, I think, had his 150th appearance or something like that, or cap for for Belgium. Um, There's a lot to say about Belgium, especially moving on to Domenico Tedesco, who's uh, certainly nowhere near the experience of Roberto Martinez, their previous manager. But um, I know him fairly well from his time in the Bundesliga in Germany. Um, Next he'll go, and it's pretty far gapped all the way down to, I I, I haven't looked at these numbers that closely yet, doing it live for all of you, but Ukraine or Ukraine 80 to one odds. When I pulled this a year ago, I had to get through the playoffs, but they're currently sitting hundred to one odds and not a big deal for them not to play at home because they're not used to it. They haven't played a home match internationally for a very, very long time. Uh, still got Romania left, which they should be lower. They are, they were 200 to one when I looked, then have fallen to 175 to one. So that's some respect coming in uh, on the Romanians who to me were uh, really I think a squad that were destined to make the last Euros ended up kind of falling by the wayside towards the end uh, and then looked really good, or maybe that was qualifying for the World Cup. But uh, I think Romania is good. I think they've got some really good young players. Giannis Haji, who doesn't hasn't really played as much, um, was at Rangers, uh, was on loan at Alaves, Deportivo Alaves in La Liga in Spain. Uh, and there's a lot more to this team, I think, than uh, probably one that I'll be backing a lot during this competition. And last but not least, Slovakia, one of the biggest long shots to win this whole thing. They actually opened at a worse 
or a better price, more likely to win the competition than Romania did, 150 to one. But have since then climbed to five to fifty thousand plus five thousand plus fifty thousand, so five hundred to one with this whole thing. So Slovakia and Romania have certainly changed positions over the last year. I think it's a lot based on Romania's young talent looking a lot more solid and capable. Uh, and Slovakia really having not much in attack, I think is my biggest concern for them. So it looks like Belgium, Ukraine, Romania, and Slovakia is the expected order to finish based on the futures. And it uh, looks like we got one more group to get through before I can actually throw some numbers out there. Hopefully this is not boring too many of you, but still a bunch of people keep filing in. So I appreciate that. Um, and I thank you so much, of course, for all the support. If you're not following me on, on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, YouTube, at the real underscore you are the best spot to do that. But the last group, Group F, we have Turkey, Georgia, Portugal, and Chechia. Um, Portugal, who are in a great group, um, and they have been my long. I'll put it this way: I've been picking Portugal to win this thing for a very, very long time. Uh, I think the initial odds that I saw the best were 12 to one odds. Uh, when I pulled this a year ago, we got plus 950 uh, down to eight to one about a week ago. And now we're down to seven to one. So uh, that makes Portugal fourth favorites to win this competition. Winning the group doesn't matter as, as it would in the world cup, but uh, there's, this is a very good group for Portugal to get uh, to continue their streak. I, I think they were undefeated qualifying for this competition. It doesn't say a lot because that's uh, against I think five teams back to back or, or home and away. Um, I think they won all their matches. I want to say pretty impressive, but it doesn't say anything, but it does at least speak to what will potentially happen in this group F uh, Turkey, Turkey are, are not, I thought a few competitions ago uh, specifically in the uh, whatever they were in with Wales. So I guess that would have been because they were playing matches in either by John. So that was in the Euro 2021 uh, or 2020 played in 2021. I really liked them then, but their defense was a disaster. Um, and it was a really, really poor showing Turkey have, have improved since then, but I'm not still much of a believer in them at this point. Um, in terms of the uh, the Georgians, they won a penalty shootout against Greece to get in. And I really like some of the pieces of their team, um, even beyond uh, Varad Varadskilia or Varadona, as they were calling him in Napoli, uh, when Napoli won the Scudetto. Um, important left wing was called the Georgian Messi, even before he landed at Napoli. Some great recruitment there. I love Georgian Mikatadze, who was uh, doing all he could to keep football club de Mess in the uh, league uh, top flight. That did not work, but uh, still a, a, an awesome goal scorer and one of those talents you really want. Plus, Georgi Ma Mamadashvili uh, in the uh, in the in the goal for Valencia. Incredible shot stopper, penalty kicks killer, um, and he's going to be someone that will be very hard to beat. So I'm looking for Georgia, one of the I, I guess least respected teams in this competition, to uh, potentially make some noise and more noise than you'd expect, especially since. Uh, top two go through and all these groups guaranteed wouldn't be a shock to me if they finish second in this group uh chechia they have not really looked the same patrick schick has been injured really ever since he scored that that half uh from from midfield goal against scotland i want to say or something like that it might have been in scotland in euros last edition um he's been in and out of the lineup to say the least and then feels like a lot of the chech Czech side was looking a lot better and they haven't really capitalized on the momentum that they had from previous, uh, I guess, competitions uh, in terms of the odds to get through. So Portugal, as I already mentioned, their fourth favorites and a lot to based on their group. Uh, easy to say Georgia because they were not on this list ever. They are now 50, uh, 50, 000, plus five, 50,000. So 501 odds to win this whole thing. Um in terms of the, uh, I would think that Czech Republic would be before Turkey, but they're close. So they, were, so the Czechs were sixty-six to one, climbed to two hundred fifty to one, and are now two hundred twenty-five to one odds to win. So that's pretty significant growth. Turkey started at eighty to one odds outside of Czech Republic, but they've stayed a lot lower, so hundred thousand, so uh, hundred to one odds to win this competition, and are still there. So in the order of finish, projected order of finish in this group, it would be Portugal. Uh, Turkey, Chechia, and then Georgia in that order if you were uh, using the to win the whole competition odds to kind of come up with a, a suggestion on, on how these would all end. So in terms of futures time, so I, I think it's time for me to go through and, and I'll just 
go through an exhausting list at, at Bet Online and try to point out anything that's of notice. Of course, anyone with comments, questions, interests, or anything like that, feel please feel free to uh, to shoot them through. Um, I haven't seen any come through that are, are relevant. So, um, but I, I do want to mention my my guy Joe Segreda. Thank you so much for asking questions. And I think the first thing I'd start with because he had mentioned Lewandowski to be Poland's leading scorer. I don't know that I want to go as deep into the individual scoring, but I hope you didn't play it because uh, he, he had mentioned that uh, this is one of my Patreon subs- subscribers, patreon.com slash so real underscore G one of the best spots to get all my plays, leans, write-ups, everything across all sports, including what's going to come out for this entire competition, plus my daily baseball plays, which have been uh, up and down to say the least. There's been a lot of, as you would see from a major league baseball season, a lot of wins. I've had some incredible streaks, winning 12 in a row, then losing 11 in a row. So it's been wild uh, but also i think very good lately in the washington nationals basically however the washington nationals have been doing lately that will tell you how my baseball betting has been doing a uh, really great weekend one of them three games in a row but started out the week losing on them monday and tuesday so uh go join my patreon patreon.com such a real underscore g warner uh best spot as i said to get my place leans right up across all sports uh but joe mentioned that uh, Lewandowski was the only odds on favorite uh, for from the, the teams that he was looking at for top scorers. Um, and it makes sense because Lewandowski is awesome and has that big name value. But seeing him sitting on the pitch in the 32nd minute when he's probably only going to play a half today is not a good sign for his output health or anything like that. So, Joe, I hope you didn't actually play that one. Uh, if you did, uh, maybe he'll return or maybe he'll have a really big match and match day two or three if he misses the first one. Uh, or maybe Poland just won't score at all this entire competition. You get bail out that way or something like that. Um, but other than that, uh, I think Poland looks very scary to me. And 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 the nice part about this competition or the scary part is, and kind of how I feel about all soccer betting is you really need to see lineups which come out at the very least an hour before a matchup, sometimes less than that, actually, to be fair. Um, depends, I think, how good the social media team is or how go- quickly Google can capture some information uh, to display it. Uh, but that, that's a, a big deal and something I will certainly be around for debating whether to do live streams. If people are interested in that, please feel free to to send through some requests. Um, you know, it's a great time to to be working from home so I can uh, throw that out there. But it's certainly something I'm very excited for this competition and for the Copa America, which that podcast will be coming later. Um, so I'll go through some futures, try to pick out some that are of interest uh, while I'm on this podcast. And of course, coming with an ultimate best bet end of show coming later. Hopefully my computer is not spasming out because it's very slow at the moment. It's really all about enjoyable experience. I think Apple is trying to make me upgrade though. I've not been really wanting to do that. I got to say M1 chip, I guess it's probably pretty old now, unfortunately. But uh, so as I mentioned, I, I guess I'll start with the future. So England, the favorite, France, second favorite, pretty close to those two. A little bit of a drop off to Germany, then Portugal, Spain, Belgium, Italy, Netherlands, Croatia. And then I feel like we probably get too far outside. Like Denmark, I was really into them in the World Cup and they very grossly disappointed. Um, I don't know that that I mean, they do have a lot of talent, but I feel like that long shot that I played probably sours me to playing them in this one. So probably they have a much better tournament here. Hard not to. Uh, but I think anyone Cro- Croatia and lower um, has, a, has a decent chance. That would be, it uh, looks like nine teams that I think have a decent shot. Croatia at 40 to 1 odds is of, of great interest to me. Um, in terms of long shots, I just don't think that you could ever trust any anyone below that to, to win this whole thing. Uh, I think there are significant limitations. So I think there's a lot more value probably in picking who will advance, though most of these teams are favored because uh, pretty much only six teams or excuse me, eight teams out of 24. So basically 75% will move through. That's not great. Uh, first time winner, no minus 200 is, is of interest. I guess I'm just going through the the, the options for futures at BetOnline, sportsbetting.ag. Um, two chances to win England, France, not surprising to be the top. Um, probably worth looking at the... Uh, the bracket. Uh, let's see if I can pull that up while we're looking at it. I, I do know that Portugal had a pretty big advantage if they win their group to be placed on a different side of the bracket. Uh, let's see if we can get in here. So, bracket view, Euro 2024, um, which is, is really hard, and and this is certainly there's a lot of permutations and com- kind of coming up with what this could look like at some point. Uh, it's not my favorite thing to do. I got to say, and maybe it's not that valuable on this, uh, type of podcast, but, um, 
Yeah, it's so hard to say, but like pretty much if you're first in your group, you can f- place a, a third place team. That's huge. Uh, unfortunately, if you win group D, you are guaranteed second place in group F, which that's a pretty weak group, but that likely means France plays one of Georgia, Turkey or Chechia. Uh, maybe I should say the English version, Turkey, Czech and Georgia. Um, second place teams will play each other potentially. Um, it'd be really great to be a first place team in group C, which will probably be England. You get a third place team, uh, first place in E, which would be, uh, Belgium. You get a third place team, first place in F would be Portugal. Most likely you get a third place team. So it's very valuable. First in A is not great though. Germany has a really tough p- possibility here. If they win their group, they get a second place team from, from group C, which would not be ideal, but certainly second place team is not so bad. First in B would be, uh, potential for Spain, Croatia, or Italy, and they get a third place team. So those, all those sort of things. And if you have, I, I think, deep sort of interest in one team finishing a certain way or finishing in a first place position, that will certainly make the uh, the travel or the, the path to that cup final uh, a lot easier. There's just so much to project there. And I think it's really hard to do. Um, so I'm not really so interested. What Which group will the winner come from? Group C is favored here. That's England. Uh, and then Group D is next, which would be France and Netherlands. So probably be those two that I picked out. Then Group B, Spain, Croatia, and Italy. Because you get three shots at all that. Then Group A was Germany. And I'm not really sure that the Swiss are that likely to be on that list. Scotland and Hungary, probably not either. Group F, pretty much you're just back in Portugal, 7-1. to one, And that's what this suggests here. And then Group E, you got 14-1. to one, Belgium and uh, you're basically shaving a little off off of Belgium's price. I just want to play Belgium right there. It'd probably be the best suggestion. Um, So I think my biggest interest so far as I'll I'll cater this towards the ultimate best bet coming end of show uh, to win this whole thing. I mean, I do like Croatia 40 to one odds, but I also like Portugal seven to one Uh, going to the groups. Now Um, this will be, I think a little bit more interesting, hopefully. Uh, So we get point numbers, which we can talk about Uh, Germany over six and a half points. Very, very juiced to over, um, course they're going to be at home and favored in all their matches but switzerland will be tough i think all these matches will be um i i don't trust germany it's a low block we saw them struggle with greece and not in, in a excuse me in a friendly early this week i don't think that all of a sudden gets solved overnight i think they're really built and the tony cruz ad is a lot bigger for playing better teams uh that actually might be uh trying to push you uh and trying to win the possession battle uh to finish bottom in group a if scotland is a favorite plus 110, Hungary, Switzerland, and then, of course, Germany. I don't expect Germany to finish last in a home Euro uh, to finish bottom of their group. Um, makes sense. Scotland's there. I think Hungary a lot better. Um, Swiss, I don't think, are that extremely different. But uh, groups, the highest scoring goals. Um, I mean, it really, I think, depends on who's going to play the most defensively and who's going to try to lock down matches. Uh, to advanced numbers, Germany, huge favorite. Hungary, uh, slight favorite Scotland favored and Switzerland also favored. So maybe there's a potential for someone. I usually try to, if I'm be- betting a future, I really want to back someone with a plus sign next to it. So two advance is probably not going to happen unless you take one of the worst teams in this competition. And even if I went to a team like Georgia, then I'm really having to face or, or at least think about um, potentially their goal difference and how they impact are impacted by the other groups. Um In terms of Group A dual forecast, Germany and Switzerland are the favorite to finish first and second. That makes a lot of sense. I think Germany, Hungary, second most likely seems of interest to me. Um, And then moving now to, I guess, Group A, a top two finish, Germany minus 1,000. Um, That makes sense. Uh, Switzerland minus 115, Hungary plus 145, Scotland plus 220. I mean, I'm interested in Hungary getting a plus 145 there to finish in the top two. Um, don't know if that'll make my, my favorites though. Uh, group a winner, Germany minus 275, Switzerland plus 525, Hungary plus 750, Scotland plus 1025, uh, big, big favorites in Germany. I just don't know if there's a team in there that I really like the next, uh, on the list. Moving to group E, Belgium minus 185, Ukraine plus 375, Romania plus 650, Slovakia eight to one. Um, Belgium have flaws, but they have a lot of talent too. And uh, I think Ukrainian defense is is too, I'm too scared of it to really want to back them. So I don't think that that's there. I don't think Romania have enough firepower to win that group. Group F, Portugal minus 220. Feels like might be a little cheap based on Turkey plus 435, Czech Republic plus 500, and Georgia 16 to 1. 
I mean, yes, they're they're favored more than Belgium are. Uh, clearly, they're favored. Uh, favored less than Germany, which I think Switzerland's a, a more, uh, they're a much better second team to threaten them. So Portugal minus 220 to win the group. That's of interest to me. Uh, get exact group points. I don't know if that's worth it, but Albania favored to finish with zero. Belgium favored to win two of their three games, draw the other. So finish on seven. Croatia to finish on four in a really tough group. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of possibilities there. Czech Republic to finish on four. Uh, Denmark to finish on four, England to win all three matches to finish on nine points. That feels a little bit uh, like high expectations, especially when uh, groups are one to see what happens with uh, third place or the third match day when you might be trying to get some some people some minutes. Uh, France on seven is seven and nine, I guess, are equally uh, shared there for exact group points plus 250. Um, exact group points for Georgia. They're expecting one to be most likely zero. Next, most likely three plus 350 so that'd be three draws or one single win uh who would those who would that win come against i mean i could see georgia beating turkey or chechia i don't really think they'll probably draw three so three would be difficult to see that happen but maybe i'm a bigger believer in georgia than i should be germany nine points is the favorite so just similar to uh to england this is plus 175 here though hungary on three points is the favorite italy at four points same as croatia uh, Netherlands at four points uh, when they're sharing a group with France. It makes sense. A win, a draw, and a loss to France is what that's suggesting, which seems a little bit uh, underwhelming, I think would be a disappointing tournament for that. Pol Poland, favorite to finish at one point. So that's not great, especially with the injuries today. I wonder how much that has moved. I don't think I logged that, unfortunately. Portugal, seven or nine are the favorites here. So expecting an unbeaten group, I would agree with that. Romania, favorite to finish one well, three points um which that you know i think that that interests me a little bit because i'm just not really a believer in belgium romania if they can they need to get a win and a draw though to to make that happen and, and honestly four is the next favorite and i don't think i want to play any of these exact group points i guess it would just make sense for me to go through and say what the uh the market is expecting to be most likely scotland finish on three points that's plus 300 that sounds like a win and two losses uh serbia to finish on four plus 300 uh then we got slovakia to finish on one slovenia to finish on one and that seems to be very cheap plus 275 uh georgia i want to compare them that would be uh plus 260 so georgia's looking like people don't expect a lot from georgia which i think is a mistake i gotta say uh so Georgia and Slovenia look like they're expected to be the, the, the worst finishers. Spain's supposed to get seven points in a group of death. That feels like uh, maybe there's a, a potential over under here on Spain that I could play under points because uh, they're in a really tough group. Uh, I do like them, but I feel like they're expecting a lot in a very, very tough group. Switzerland is supposed to finish on four points. Turkey on four points. Ukraine on four points as well. OK, we'll keep going. Uh been rocking this a while now but uh i guess we're 42 minutes in there's still enough of you in here so i guess i'll keep going uh, until all of you are gone but <laughs> albania to finish bottom minus 275 makes sense the rest of that group seems competent croatia are uh, plus 300 three to one odds to finish bottom i doubt that will occur group b winners spain minus 115 italy plus 190 croatia plus 425 croatia interests me but i feel like they're more of a team i'd want probably in the knockouts to uh be an underdog there uh, as i wear my french kit you know so don't don't let that fool you no no bias here i guess my french background though does make a little bit of that uh albania to advance no minus 425 yes plus 325 there's one of those desperate uh i was looking for someone with a plus sign to advance here albania will not be that team that i'll play though um and the other great te teams in that group are awesome Two, top two finish in Group B, Spain minus 525, Italy minus 200, Croatia minus 115, skip. Uh, straight forecasts, not much for me there. Group points over under, this is what I was hoping for. So we have Hungary at two and a half points, um, very juiced over, which it probably would be. Uh, they So they need a win uh, to get through, or I guess three draws. Uh, wouldn't think that's impossible. I think they could certainly get a win. I'd lean over on that one. Switzerland, three and a half points. Uh, very juiced over there as well. I would like to get some reasonable numbers. Uh, hopefully there's other uh, other sports books that offer something better. Uh, Albania, one and a half points. Uh, that under one and a half is very juiced, and that makes sense. I think they might lose all their matches. Um, best case scenario is group 
match day three, they have someone that's already clinched, but I don't know if that's going to be the case, especially with some really tough matches so far. Uh, Croatia, three and a half points, very juiced to over. Spain, five and a half points, very juiced to over. Um, I mean, I guess they probably aren't going to give any half or any flat numbers because they don't want pushes on this, but man, I would like to take Spain to not win two, two of their matches because they got to, in order to get to six, they have to win two of them. Um, I mean, that that does interest me a little bit because they're in a really tough group, but I think I'd want more than five and a half. That doesn't feel like a lot because two wins is will get you. And Albania should be a win and they beat either Croatia or Italy, then they're hitting that over. So that five and a half is probably not enough for me. I think I want a six there. Uh, Italy, five and a half points. Under is more juiced here, minus 132. Uh, that does interest me a little bit because that means they need two wins. I don't know that they're going to beat... Uh, they might beat Albania. Of course, if any of these big teams don't, then that's a big, big deal. Uh, they probably, they all should beat Albania, but you know, Croatia, I think will be a big, big problem there. Uh, group B dual forecast, Italy and Spain to get through, uh, top two places that I think makes the most sense. Uh, of course, Croatia and Spain next and then Croatia and Italy next top two finish in group D. We have France eight to one to eight odds on, uh, Netherlands minus 175, Austria plus 155, Poland plus 320. Um, those all make sense. Group two finish or group C top two finish, excuse me, England minus 1000. So a thousand dollars to win a hundred Denmark minus 135, Serbia plus 140, Slovenia three to one odds. I mean, I'm interested to see, uh, Serbia on that list, uh, with plus money next to their name, Denmark after a really bad world cup, but, uh, and you could probably argue that Serbia is more talented than Denmark. I just don't know that's enough for me. Uh, to finish bottom, Group D, Poland minus 125, Austria plus 135, Netherlands 10 to 1, France 28 to 1. Uh, all makes sense. Slovenia minus 135 to finish bottom in Group C, Serbia plus 170, Denmark plus 625, England 40 to 1. That all, I think, seems to, I mean, most of these should make sense. Uh, Austria minus 135 to advance. Uh, that's getting towards even money, which is interesting because they're supposed to finish third in this group. France, huge favorites. Netherlands minus one to four and Poland minus 185 to not advance uh, those injuries today. That does not help at all. Denmark minus 280 to advance England minus 3,300 Serbia minus 170 to advance. So that's a third place type of position. Uh, and then Slovenia not to advance nearly one to two. So uh, not really a lot of expectations there. Trade forecast is France and Netherlands. I think that's obvious uh, England and Denmark uh, favorites, to England and Serbia. Those are the two closest. And then we can get some exact group points. Austria to finish with three as the favorite. Group D dual forecast with France and Netherlands, of course. Denmark and England, of course. Uh, group D winner, France minus 175. Netherlands plus 275. Decent potential underdog uh, there. Austria 7 to 1. Poland 13 to 1. Moving to Group C, England minus 250. Denmark plus 400. Serbia 725. And Slovenia 14 to 1. Austria over under three and a half points. Uh, they were minus one thirty five, and that's under three and a half. Uh, you know that's that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, let's see, Austria. You know they so they got to win a match and get a point uh, somewhere else, and they got Netherlands and France. I mean, I, I think they probably could get something from Netherlands, less least likely from France, and we'll see with Poland because I. I don't know what Poland's going to look like, especially if they have if those striker injuries are as serious as they look. It might be a very defensive team, which means Austria more likely to get a single point. But if they're having a breakdown, because Austria wants to play an open game under Ralf Ragnick, we'll see if that actually goes. Uh, Netherlands, four and a half points. Juice is about split both ways. Um, I mean, that means that they need uh, to get two wins from Poland and Austria if they lose to France. Asking a lot. Poland, two and a half points, juice to the under. Um, that means they need a win or three draws. I don't think they're getting three draws, so we'll see. Uh, Denmark, minus 155 on under four and a half points. So, uh, I mean, that's a win. And it, so that's a win and two draws to get over there or two wins. Um, Denmark, Serbia, I think it's going to be a big, big matchup. To see who ends up getting that second place. But it used to be that that would be who'd advance, and now it's gone, which is really sad. Uh, Slovakia, two and a half points, very juiced to over two and a half points, very juiced to over two and a half points. Slovakia, huh? 
Okay, that's because uh, I thought we were going to talk Slovenia. So now they're just throwing stuff at me. So that's a different group with Belgium, Romania, and Ukraine. Hmm. I think I'm interested in under two and a half points there because uh, I don't think they can score much. That's two draws or one win. Three draws will kill you. One win will kill you um, or kill that bet. Uh, probably a better way to put it. Mm, I don't know. That's I think that one finally a plus plus number on something I, I feel like. So hockey, I think we'll we'll finish bottom of that group as everything's projected to. Um, I guess one win is not asking a lot, but uh, I don't think three draws will happen with Belgium. Um, so that's of interest. Uh, Slovenia, that's what I was looking for earlier. One and a half points, uh, very juiced to over. So that means two draws or one win uh, will get Slovenia to the over. Uh, one draw, two losses will put them in a really... I just don't know where they're scoring goals. Um England's going to crush them. I would just suspect Denmark and Serbia. I mean, Serbia is probably the clearly the third place to finish team expected. Um, that's going to be tough. So under one and a half. I mean, one win kills you. Two draws kill you. But Slovakia need a win. Uh, Slovenia need a win. Maybe under points in the the slow teams. That seems to be a, a one one way to to look at it, or at least one way that I am at this point as my video hopefully is catching up. Um, England, six and a half points. They need two wins and a draw. It's not asking a lot. Minus 140 seems pretty reasonable. Um, but who's so, so in other words, they need two draws to happen here. Who's going to do it? Denmark is probably is definitely most likely. Serbia, I don't think they're good enough. Serbia, three and a half points. So they need a win and two draws or two wins or that'll, that's what is required. She's pretty much split on uh, under and over three and a half points. They lose to England, they lose to Denmark, can't get there. Um, that I mean, that's that's interesting to me because, um, I mean, I don't think there's a guarantee that Serbia beats Slovenia either, um, which does make that uh, more interesting, I think. So maybe under three and a half, though certainly Serbia, I think, can beat Denmark, and then that throws everything for a big, big loop. Um, group E, top two finished. Belgium's minus 750, Ukraine minus 120, Romania plus 165, Slovakia plus 175. Uh, Belgium should be favorites. Uh, Ukraine should be favored to finish second. Uh, and Romania and Slovakia are very are priced very similarly. So that's why Slovakia's, uh, I guess, point total is, is as high as it is. Uh, it's because there's not a lot of respect for Romania here. Kind of like the, that type of situation. To finish bottom in Group E, Slovakia uh, plus one fifteen, Romania plus one seventy five. There's a little bit of discrepancy there, um, especially because there are only ten uh, points of juice off in the top two finish on the plus side. Uh, Ukraine plus three fifty to finish bottom, Belgium eighteen to one. Um, I mean, plus money in Slovakia finishing bottom, and I expect them to. It just seems interesting. Uh, straight forecast: Belgium, Ukraine is favored, and then doubling that is Belgium, Romania. So that's a bit of a divide. Then less of a fall, but still more for Belgium and Slovakia finishing one two. Uh, Belgium to advance, yes, minus fifteen hundred. Romania minus one twenty five. Now that's interesting, but that does pull into play if they finish third in this group. How their goal differential or point total looks compared to the others. Uh, Slovakia no advance is is favored here, minus one twenty to yes, minus one ten. Not a huge difference. Would love to see plus money on at least one of those two options. But uh, unfortunately, the nature of the beast, I guess, uh, with futures at times. Uh, Ukraine minus 255 to advance, plus 205 not to advance. Uh, I mean, I guess that's Ukraine would have to finish third in that scenario and be worse off than the third places in uh, three of the six groups. That's hard to potentially see, not impossible. And you get two to one odds. So you only need to hit 33% to hit that. So that's not, that's not terrible. I think Romania to advance. I'm, I'm interested in, um, dual forecast group E, uh, Belgium, Ukraine are favored. That makes sense. Portugal and Turkey in group F, uh, then Czech Republic in Portugal, and then Georgia and Portugal, six to one big difference between, uh, the fall down to include Georgia as a second place finisher or top two finisher, I guess. Um, I don't know necessarily that Turkey are that much better than Czech Republic. Watch their match pretty intently today against Poland. Um, got a good goal to equalize, got beaten really by two long balls over the top. I, that was unimpressive to me. Uh, especially giving up a late goal after a late equalizer in terms of group points, Romania, three and a half points. It's getting 
plus odds. That does interest me. Let's see. So that would be uh, three and a half means a win and a draw. So uh, that means a win over Slovakia and a draw with Belgium and Ukraine. Not impossible, but uh, I can see why I think I would love a, a push on three there that I probably won't get. Ukraine, four and a half, just more to under. Um, that means they need two wins to beat me or win and two draws to be undefeated. Uh, a loss to Belgium certainly puts them in a big, big problem where they need to beat Romania and Slovakia hit over. So that probably makes sense why under is juiced there. Belgium, six and a half. Um, I'm not really a believer in Belgium. I don't know about Domenico Tedesco. He was great second half taking over for Red Bull Leipzig and then was out pretty quickly. Uh, now takes over this international job for Belgium uh, after Roberto Martinez has decided to move on, knowing that the future is not bright, it's cloudy or dark. Um, hmm. Love to be against them. I don't know if I want to do that here because they need, I mean, they need to win, they need to go undefeated and get two wins. Um, I think they beat Slovakia. I mean, after their World Cup, so bad, but maybe they've gotten some of those... Uh, uh, the poisonous uh, whatever's out of their, their system. Uh, moving to France next under six and a half, a little bit more juice than over six and a half. With tough group. I mean, if they are uh, drawing with Netherlands, they need to beat Poland and Austria. Don't think that's impossible. Would love for Poland to be a little bit more of an adversary though. With those two injuries up top, that seems very concerning to me. And France are, they could field three teams to get in this competition, really. Uh, last is Scotland. I don't know why they we're throwing these around in this order, but Scotland, two and a half points. This is certainly not going to go off on Monday, June 17th, because they play the 14th. But uh, Scotland at two and a half points, very juiced to over. Um, that means three draws will get them, or one win. They need to beat Hungary or Switzerland, or, of course, Germany in the opener. I don't think they'll do that. So uh, if they don't, they don't win. I mean, three draws will do it, but it probably means they need a win. I don't even know where they get it. So I'm interested in under two and a half, though. I love that push on three. Uh, top two finish in Group F. Portugal, then Turkey with a little bit of a fall to plus money to Czech Republic. Um, I might like the Czechs a little bit more than uh, than Turkey here. So that that's of interest to me. Um, Georgia plus 420, though. I mean, I love the Georgians. So, you know, maybe... Uh, and then we'll go down to group points. Here we go. Georgia over one and a half points. So they get a win. They do it. Oh, they need two draws. Oh, that's hard. I think the Georgians can definitely draw Turkey and check and the checks. Man, do I want to pay minus 135 for that? They just need one win. Can they, can they win now? That's the hard part. I mean, two draws is possible. Uh, I think I like them more against the spread than I do uh, on that type of over under on the points though. Turkey three and a half points, very juiced to over that I feel like is at risk. Lost to Portugal and then they need a win and a draw to get there. Uh, hmm. I mean, that's one potentially to go under on Czech Republic, three and a half points, very juiced to the over as well. Not as much as Turkey, but I mean, that. Uh, I feel like there's a good chance that there's some low point totals in this group. Uh, see some draws. See that uh, bottom team in Georgia come in and play a very defensive game. Potentially use Mikatalze to score a goal or Kvarskelia. And they have one of the best goalkeepers in the world that doesn't seem to be talked about enough. See some unders in Turkey and, and Czech Republic. That does then concern also some interest in Portugal. Six and a half is their over under. Minus 135. So not as expensive as the others and probably should win every match in this group as they have won every match in what feels like forever um who knows portugal turkey are favored than portugal czech republic as a straight forecast uh and then big drop to turkey and portugal or sorry this is directly of, of who will win portugal as the winner turkey second place portugal first and czech republic second turkey portugal third czech republic portugal and then portugal georgia i mean georgia finishing second nine to one odds and portugal winning it which i think they will hmm and to finish bottom, Jordan minus 185, Czech Republic plus 350, Turkey plus 400, 4 to 1 odds, and Portugal 28 to 1. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. To advance number, this might be more interesting. And this is the last that I have in this section, uh, which this might be about an hour of, of podcasting, of, of just reading over lines and saying what I potentially think. Uh, yeah, we're at 59 minutes. So thank you all for supporting. I'll make the, this the last part before I get into ultimate best bet. Um, 
But so I'll, I'll read this two advanced numbers in group F. So we got Czech Republic. Yes. Minus 180. It's expensive. I mean, they got a really bad fourth place team in there. Finish fourth. You can't get, get through, but finish third and you got to win the group uh, tiebreaker stuff. So that's, that's something. Uh, Georgia minus 200. No advance plus 162 advance. I mean, Hey, now all you got to do is finish in a second place position guaranteed or third place with a decent goal differential and what should be, uh, um, I mean, how many third place teams ha are going to win in this competition? That's a good question. There's probably some, I should have my intern, the research department look into how many third place teams that have gone through have won a match. Probably not many. Um, I mean, Georgia, I think they, they're, it's very possible that they could be a third place team though and not get through, but you know, it's of interest. Um, Portugal to advance minus 2,500. Yep. And Turkey to advance minus 280. So, um, significantly different than, than Czech Republic. Turkey are, are getting a lot of respect here. I'm not necessarily sure that they really deserve it. I gotta say. So, uh, I guess that wraps up. I, I mean, I, I, I don't, I feel like going over individual goal scorers is probably not worth, uh, this podcast time, especially an hour in I've already given the recaps of, who exactly I expect these teams to play like, or what they, I think they want to be in this competition. Um, yeah. Player specials. I'm not really interested in tournament prompts. I feel like that's goal scoring stuff. Anyway, if there's more that I, I find and as I deep uh, dive deeper into this, I'll, I'll come up with something and try to shout that out to the people. But for now, I think I'm, I'm, I'm okay with, uh, I think where we stand and, uh, I think that's one of those things that I'll now get into our, our best bet portion of the show. I guess it's not really an ultimate best bet as usual because I don't have five different European soccer leagues that I'm comparing. Uh, but you feel free to grade me on upon this. And I think that's something that uh, probably seems like something that uh, might be of use maybe later later down the line uh, to hold me hold my feet to the fire. Tell me how how much I've changed my opinion on, on one team versus another. But uh, I think it's time to let's get into it. Hey, this is a real underscore G Warner. This is betting the pitch, the Euro 2024 futures edition uh, going through, I went through uh, at length an hour long podcast, going through each of the teams in this competition, what I expect them to kind of play for, how I expect them to play, what I want, what I think they want to do and, and kind of their expectations, plus the groups around them and a lot about kind of how the, the tournament will potentially play out with third place teams getting through at six of the eight or excuse me, four of the six groups and then plus the top two finishers in each group. So a lot of teams will be moving on. It'll be a, a very thick knockout stage, knockout round, but plenty of money to be made and more matches, better matches. If you're not a member of my Patreon, check it out, patreon.com. So that's a real underscore G Warner, the best spot to get all my plays, leans, write-ups, and everything across all sports, including a very jam-packed baseball schedule, which I'm about to start really getting through before the end of this day. But for my best bet, the ultimate best bet on this futures episode, I'm going to go with Portugal to win the entire competition, to lift the trophy, plus 700 and that'll do it for this episode thank you for tuning in i will talk to you all very soon uh stay tuned for another copa america episode tomorrow uh plus an, a baseball one with that a brooks bets after a 2-0 and, and uh of course pregame stuff coming out each day podcast on thursday and uh you'll be seeing this face as much as you want or not don't want to to see it uh, of course, if you don't want to actually see this face, you can just listen to the podcast audio version on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, I guess on YouTube, you probably have to watch. But at The Real Underscore G Warner, on most platforms, uh, leave a five-star review. It's huge for the search rankings. And the more of those I get, the more podcasts I do, and hopefully the more money I put in your pockets. So I'll talk to you all very soon. Have a great Monday, June 10th, and I'll talk to you on Tuesday, June 11th for the next podcast, Copa America.